This what, meeting is being recorded. What feels like forever, it's the Wrestling Perspective. I'm Dennis Farrell. He's Lars Fredrickson, who apparently is ghost to me. I met him in person, and poof, I have never saw him again. We, if For everybody at home, we bank some podcasts, and then we'll air them whenever we get a little bit busy. And uh, for you, it's instantaneous. You get a podcast. For us, it's like, hello, are you there? And he's gone. Lars, what happened? I thought we met, we bonded. I, I, well, obviously, I obviously wasn't that impressed with you <laughs> in person. So I said yes, know. sir, no, sir. <laughs> but uh, oh, Dennis, you know, it's like first of all, you come on here and you bag on me. Then the second thing you do is you give the secrets of the trade up. It's like there's no fucking kayfabe anymore. You know what I mean? It's uh-huh. like. You know, when when's fucking poor Carrie going to come on like four months from now? I mean, are, is that where is that what we're doing? It's we're putting him off. Well, K-Fabe isn't dead to me, damn it. <laughs> well, see, people are watching this, this. You know what, Dennis, why don't you just put your, you know, your video, you know, just just cut it off and me and Carrie will handle this shit. But anyways, wow. it's nice to see you, Dennis. Did, listen. Uh, you and I had such a blast. I, you know what? If you keep this music thing up, you might have a career in it. That's all I'm going to say. Never know. Everybody you know. knows you as a world class podcaster, but this music <laughs> thing, that's I'm saying, stick with it. All right. All right. All right. But I do want to get quick to the top of the show. We put it out on social media. We had easily a thousand plus entries into who wants to win an autograph Lars Fredrickson record. We had two of them. We have two winners. Ian Kerr from Scotland is one of the winners. Yes. That'll cost you on shipping. It will. Uh, thank you, Ian Kerr, for that one. Uh, with inflation and going up, I'm actually going to have to send him my firstborn child as well. So good luck with that. She's 13, sucker. And uh, I hope I get his name right from Chicago, Illinois. Kyle uh, Kensing, Kensington, Kensington, K-E-S-T-E-R-S-O-N. If that's you, uh, congratulations. Can, what, spell again? K-E-S-T-E-R-S-O-N. Kesterson? That sounds right to me. Uh, Ke- yeah, Kesterson, you win. Uh, you guys got uh, two or three weeks to reach out. Let me know you watch this so you know I, I know you won. If I don't, one of the records or both of the records go back up onto the market and we try to give them away again. I'm mad jealous. You know, if they don't pick up, then send one to me because I have a little spot on this wall behind me that's perfectly uh- fit up. I got you. I got, I got, I got you, Carrie. That's no problem. I got you. You're, 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 you've, you've been a contest winner for weeks. Wow. Yes. Thank goodness. Thank so go- I've been trying all damn, all damn year. I've been trying. I finally won. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, Carrie Morton too has just won news, breaking news. Oh, he's here. Oh, there he is. Hi. See that's, that's hey. hey. So listen, let's get to the show finally. Thank you, yes. by the way, to everybody. I'm sure down the line we will have more things to give away. Uh, but I appreciate everybody reaching out and all that stuff. That was awesome. All right. Carrie Morton, what third generation wrestler, fourth. singer, actor, fourth, fourth, fourth or third? No, you're, you're my third generation. Third generation. Oh, that's right. Okay. I was like, I thought I did my homework, but this is a, that would be the second time I did that and I was wrong with uh, a, a, a yeah. So then I started second guessing myself, but thank you. Uh, actor, singer, dancer, wrestler, Carrie Morton. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Man, what an intro. I appreciate uh, having me on here. If you would have told, you know, eight-year-old Carrie that was playing his GameCube, singing Fall Back Down, that you're going to be on a podcast with these guys one day, you, you'd be flipping out right now. You'd be like, oh, shit, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You'd be up in your face, too, because this is, this is an honor. So thanks for having me on the air, guys. First of all, eight-year-old Carrie would be like, who the fuck is Dennis Farrell? <laughs> First of all. If, if Dennis Farrell was in your life at eight years old, I'd be calling the police. I wouldn't be calling anybody else. That's a safe <laughs> bet, too, guys. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. No, I, that's I absolutely true. Uh, don't don't worry. You're not the first eight-year-old that had to make that phone. No. No. What? What are you doing, bro? I don't what know. Do you I'm, listen, what are you doing? let's get into the questions. Yes. Uh, I, I'm going to come out and just ask this question. Uh, 
you have one of the greatest fathers in wrestling history. Uh, I, oftentimes, Lars and I will talk about sometimes how the old heads in wrestling uh, are starting to turn into the get off my yard guys who are it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to move on from what wrestling was to what wrestling is they have their like own pre- like that what the hell come oh, on not, he, not him i'm not lumping him into that but i'm oh, just saying but but like the vince russo's and whatnot who can't let go of what wrestling was to what wrestling is now and they want it to be wrestling from their era You're learning from one of the greatest in history, but on the same time, with as much as wrestling's changed from then to now, do you sometimes feel like you need to find somebody? uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to ask this, but more into your generation who has made it up to the next level to fill in some of those blanks? No, absolutely. That's right. So when I made the transition, when I told my dad I officially wanted to wrestle uh, right before the pandemic. Uh, you know, and I've been training prior to that all at his wrestling school, and I learned his style, and he showed me his style day in and day out. And at the time, I was very grateful to uh, have trainers such as Dr. Tom Pritchard and Ooh. Bobby, beautiful Bobby Eaton, and, and just Dennis Condry of the, you know, both Midnight Expresses, mm-hmm. uh, Jim Cornette that work with me with some promo skills. Uh, I, I was so fortunate, and you know, I, I just can't even put into words how grateful I was to uh, learn from those guys. So now that I've kind of got that turn and then I started making my break in this business and I started to get, you know, started with everything uh, and making the independent scene, I realized that my old school wrestling motive of how I was, how I was wrestling in the ring was different from those that were wrestling on the show as well. You know, the people were going out there and doing high spot after high spot and flip after flip. And I was out there working a headlock routine and still getting a huge pop because I knew exactly how to intertwine between doing the new generation of wrestling and the older stuff, getting back to the basics. So uh, that's helped a ton. Uh, My dad has kind of also adjusted with the wrestling scene. I don't know if you notice either, but he's, uh, he's big of GCW. He's big with uh, NWA right now and a couple other promotions, new G uh, new Japan pro wrestling. So he kind of watches this religiously too. He still loves wrestling. He eats, sleeps and breathes wrestling. That's all he does constantly. So uh, it's cool. I get to sit down with him and then I get to, I get to go on and travel the scene. So I work with uh, another a big person that's helped me in my career was Chase Owens. He's in the bullet club over in Japan right now for new Japan pro wrestling, uh, IWGP world champion too, a tag team champion, I should say. Uh, he's helped tremendously uh, making my break and making sure I can uh, intertwine. Like I said, the new generation of professional wrestling of, having their styles adjusted, having cool high spots and having cool flips, and then going back to the basics. Well, one of the things... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just saying, I just went on a burst of wrestling, so... (laughs) That's all good. Well, when I do watch your matches, I do see a lot of that old school in it. And obviously, it would be hard for you not to with all the trainers, you know, that you've had and some of the greats. And I do see the mix of the new stuff. Um, but what we're seeing in wrestling today is like almost, you know, uh, it's, it's like in a transitional phase, which I think is perfect for what you're, what you're, what you're talking about and the style that you're, you're bringing. I, I, it's the storytelling aspect seems to be coming back in today's wrestling as opposed to just high spot after high spot. And just, it's more about the moves to make the people pop as opposed to the pace and the story. So <clears throat> those elements coming in in your generation do you feel like you're sort of maybe a little bit uh unique in that sense or are you finding that's that's more more of something that's coming back into play or am i just crazy no i I love that question uh that you know it's a really good point is you know when when you always start in your career you know this even came from musical theater when i did tours of shows and stuff you always have kind of like self-doubt like am i doing this right and, you know, and then you go out there and you get an applause and you have people that want to buy your merchandise. So you always have things like, am I doing this shit right? Like, am, am I doing? So what I looked at to it is when I came into wrestling, I wanted to bring uh, a style back and just, per, you know, perfect that style of old school wrestling along with some new generational stuff. You know, I can fly. I can do ground wrestling. I can I can do technique wrestling. But uh I think that's what I really, really like base myself on is just being different 
you know, uh, especially if you guys happen to go to independent wrestling shows, uh, it, it's the same shit. And I, I hate saying that to some of the guys, but they go out there and the match before did all the high spots that the second match is going to do. You know, they did the Canadian Destroyer. They did the 619. They did the uh, Spanish Fly. Like, I'm like, damn, guys, like, why don't you just take a second and watch what other people are doing in the ring, how they're interacting with the crowd. Imagine that lady on the first row that's wild up. Can you interact with her and get her just going? Like, that's what makes me just, I, I, I really, and I, I sound like an old angry veteran right now, <laughs> so, but I'm just a young kid on the game. I'm just learning every day as I go on, but I just hear the same shit all the time. Like, why would you do that when the person just before you just did that? So uh, that's what I, I'm trying to bring my style into professional wrestling of Southern wrestling. Uh, it's, a, it's a style that's been talked about for many of years uh, as Southern wrestling, you know, having some cool things in between, but then showing storytelling, uh, showing what, you know, if you twist my arm, that that shit actually hurts. If you take a back bump off the top rope, that shit actually hurts and selling it and putting the other guys over. Uh, and that's what I'm just trying to add in my early career as I keep on moving on is just, does this work? You know, does this not work? What can I do to adjust my matches? Taking feedback from not only the wrestlers, but the fans. Because, you know, a lot of these guys forget is the fans. It's the fans that we're performing for, not the boys in the back that we're trying to pop. I like that. The, this kid, I, you know, I like this kid, Lars. This, wow. You know what? Let, let me ask you this now. And that's I'm t I'm actually still that's one of Lars's favorite uh, lead-ins to a question. And uh, we're in an age now with like uh, YouTube, Twitter, and all that stuff, where I think paying your dues seems to be a little bit maybe overrated now. Where you don't necessarily have to pay your dues to get to the top. You don't have to be on the indie scene for ten or fifteen years. You have people with three years being in the middle of a you know, television show. Uh, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head, but there are some very young green guys now that are that are prominent stars in other companies, television, uh, GCW, that kind of stuff. Do you feel like having the last name Morton, where I I think even if we were still back in the day, uh, your climb to the top would be slightly faster based on your bloodline than some of the others that you. I don't want to say be apologetic for for being uh, shot to 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 where you are, but you are. You're good. I've watched some of your matches, but on the flip side, you are light years ahead of where maybe someone whose name would be Kerry Johnson would be, not Kerry Morton. And and do you see maybe I don't want to say resentment or. Like, oh, the whispers in the back, oh, he he's a Morton. Well, he shouldn't be here if he wasn't. Yeah, so, you know, that's really funny that you asked that. I, I was recently talking to someone else in the locker room uh, about the scenario. It's like, man, your last name is Morton. You know, you're going to get out there and you're going to perform and the promoter's going to see you. And I'm like, no, dude, you got to understand something. Having my last name is awesome. I, I'm, I'm grateful for what my dad did in this business. And he busted his ass up and down this road for many of years to have his legendary fame and status. Uh, but when it comes to myself, I, I'm trying to make a name for myself. You know, I'm trying to uh, live with my father, you know, be with my father on the road, wrestle with him and learn. That's his gotta game. be hard. <laughs> it's tough. It's so damn tough, George. You understand. It's tough. I, I get it. <laughs> but, you know, and people understand like, man, you, you're getting a break in this business. But what also wrestlers and fans don't consider is when you get in the spotlight, you have to perform. You have to show them that you're exactly everything that you said and more. Because when you get there and they just look at you and say, okay, you're Morton's boy. What else can you do? No, I'm damn Kerry Morton. I can do something myself. I can go out there and I can wrestle. I can cut a promo. I'm not afraid to get in that spotlight. I'm not afraid to tell someone in the back that, hey, that shit wasn't good, bro. You should probably consider doing something else. That's just me. That's the way I was raised. I come from a very competitive cutthroat world of uh, theater and then playing sports on like a big high school field and, and uh, playing sports for AAU and doing all this kind of stuff where competition is at its highest. And if you can't compete with the other guys, then get yourself out of the game. Well, it's refreshing, you know, to know that that still exists, especially with, you know, I feel like you have to have some sort of belief in yourself in order to succeed to begin with. Um, 
I guess what I really want to ask is this, this, the opportunity, like you were talking about living with your dad out in the road. I mean, you've been his tag team partner, obviously. <laughs> is it, is it, is there, is there a, a difference in the relationship when it's working or is it still kind of like a father and son kind of trip when you're at work together? Yeah. So that's funny too. It, it's kind of a different, but it's also kind of the same, you know, especially when we're traveling with Robert too. Uh, mm. Hoot is a fucking character. <laughs> Excuse my mouth, but he's something just wild out of this world. Uh, you got to know him to really understand like what you're getting yourself into. And when we get in the road of my dad and Robert and myself, you know, then it's more of a business uh, form that you're, you know, this is your time. This is our schedule. If you don't follow your schedule, then uh, you're going to get left behind. Like I know, for instance, and I will tell you a funny story. I'm here. Uh, we were going to, it's not a far place from my house it's called Mountain City, Tennessee. And, uh, you know, Robert came in and spent the night with us the, the night prior. I think we're going to leave like 2.30 in the afternoon. And uh, <laughs> me being me, I went and worked out, ran a few errands, and, you know, walked the dog. And time I looked back, I think it was like 2.26 as I started making my way to the house. And you're not kidding when they said 2.30. <laughs> like, they left my ass at home. <laughs> and so they left me my, my wrestling bags in my dad's trunk of the car. And I was so <laughs> furious. But he said, he said, if you don't get your ass here in time, I'm going to leave you. I was like, no, you're not. That's a joke. Yeah, their ass, they left me. That was fun. So that'll <laughs> teach you. Yeah, it is kind of a different atmosphere. Uh, you know, it's still my dad, and we're still great friends. And he is one of my best friends, I would say. And some guy can talk to you about anything. And, and you know, he trusts me. We have a good, we have good friendship and bond. Uh, but it's true. It's just business. And that's how he is. Hey, man, if you want to make it in this road, then your ass got to get up early. You got to go to the gym. You got to go. You know, he's really hard on me. He's like, you know, you got to go to the gym. You got to work out. You got to diet properly. You know, you got to work on your promo skills. You have to get your education. So it's a lot, you know, kind of shoved down my throat, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Wait, wait. I love that you threw diet in there coming from one of the greatest wrestling stars of the 80s, who's who, not him, but in the 80s, let's say most wrestlers' uh, shape was slightly round, uh, maybe pudgy. When, when did diet become important? Not so much for him, but that generation, because uh, when I think of your dad, I, I don't think of abs. I don't think of dieting and it's not a insult there. Oh, no, no, that's okay. It's just kind of recently. It's really kind of weighed on me is, you know, uh, when you're an entertainer and pro Lars, you probably experience this too, is you're on stage and you're always having a presence. Like everyone's always looking at you. You want to make sure that your outfit looks good. Your hair looks nice. You know, you, you have a, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I saw that little thing yet there was, that was funny, but no, you, you're always looking at uh, different atmos like aspects of the business. And my biggest thing was like, I just feared a cheerleading season uh, and we won our division two national. So we're all getting a ring, which is really cool, but I had to put on a lot of weight in order to just keep on maintaining uh, a good, you know, having a good performance on the mat and you know eating a lot because i'm going to burn a lot during practice a lot of calories so uh that was something that really weighed on to me especially at the last nwa pay-per-view i felt like i would just went in there and i was bloated and uh my dad looked at me and he came to, and i had my shirt off in the locker room and i was kind of had a good tan and i was getting some baby oiled up and he looked at me and said hey bro <laughs> getting a little big right there and i said oh all right dad well i appreciate the kind words and so so it was kind of tough though let me you know he kind of got onto my ass he's like hey man you got a diet you know especially if you want to make it and those other guys that's coming for your spot so uh if you're not ready they sure as hell will be so that was kind of that opened my eyes a lot yeah and i also think that in the 80s that the the science of food and everything else and also all the bullshit chemicals and everything else that they put in the food in today's world wasn't really there or, and maybe it was body by beer too, you know, so who knows, but uh, so, you know, you've been uh, done a few shows with the NWA, you're doing a lot of the Indies stuff. Um, are you finding yourself, you know, when it comes to the TV stuff, it's a whole kind of different kind of learning curve, isn't it? Because you got to know where cameras are and these things. And uh, do you, would you say that your experience with the theater and these things like that has helped you in that realm? Tremendously, yes. Uh, especially, 
when you go from the independence, you know, the independence, you're not necessarily worried about the, the, the camera. You're not worried about the camera being on you all the time. You're worried about the fans. You know, the fans right. are paying their hard earned money to come watch you perform. And I, I love to get them involved either with a simple hand clap or, you know, when I'm taking heat and I'm selling my ass off, I want to get the fans involved. And, you know, you know, I know wrestling is entertainment, but still try to have that one person believe that, Oh shit, you know, he's actually getting his ass kicked. Um, uh, and that's something I took in from my dad, too. And when you go to TV, it's more like you are working that camera. You know, the fans are there and they're involved. But when that camera light is on, I mean, it's it's full go. You're, you're entertaining those that are at home that are watching this at their, you know, on their phones, on their the computers, their iPads, whatever. They're watching you wrestle. So it, it took a second to really kind of get in the zone. Uh, but uh, I remember when we filmed something for I did High School Musical. I did the little world the Disney tour of High School Musical. And I remember kind of uh, our director coming in, they're like, hey guys, we're gonna film this for some of the archives and uh, make sure you don't change anything up, but just notice there's gonna be some cameras and some cameraman will probably get in the way so just, you know, go on about it. So uh, I kind of take that experience and I'm trying to bring it into wrestling. Like, okay, like when I you know, red light's on, you gotta go, you gotta work the camera, you gotta know uh, where your angles are and where your cameras are. And especially if you don't, your producers will get hot and then your boss will get hot. And then it's like, oh, like I didn't do my job right. So now I need to go pick up and see what I can do better. I want to backtrack kind of to your origin story. And I had read about it and we talked about it before we hit record uh, a little bit about before you jumped into wrestling, you were a theater major or in theater, you're a contracted employee. COVID kind of changed, uh, I think COVID ended your contract, and then you decided you were going to go into wrestling. Am I kind of correct there? You're right. So uh, this is kind of a funny story. So I just ended a show at the time. It was called I'll Never Be Hungry Again. It was near my uh, house in Kingsport, Tennessee. Um, and it was not like a much of a contract of a show. My contract was coming towards an end when the pandemic began in March, you know, early March. And uh I just, I was, I'm a senior in high school at the time. And I, I you know, I, I've been in contracts all four years of high school. I went from, you know, freshman to sophomore, junior, and I was still a contract while playing sports, while attending school, um, while going to training for wrestling during the time. So I was just kind of getting burnt out. You know, I, I just felt like I was, I had a great push. And mind you, I'm, I was like the only one in the company that didn't have a theater education that went on to college or a theater minor or major in college. I was just the right kid at the right place at the right time. You know, that was, I, I, felt the, I filled the parts up uh, what they wanted. And thankfully they just kept on renewing my contract and I was going on to other tours and stuff and I built up my resume. But uh, it was, it was kind of funny when it ended. Um, Cause I remember I went into the office after the show and the show, I had two more months left in my contract. And the show ended uh, and it was a sold out, like one, two weekend run. It's a sold out weekend run. I was just on top of the world. And then I showed up to school Monday morning um, and I was talking to some friends at the lunch table before like breakfast and stuff before we go into class. And they're like, what do you want to do after this? And it kind of hit me. I was like, I want to wrestle. I'm like what? Like what your dad does? And I was like, Hey, you're damn right. Like, I want to wrestle. I want to go out there and perform and, and learn and get my ass kicked. And they're like, why would you want to do that? And so, uh, <laughs> so my friend Lake, he, he called me up and he's like, all right, man, like, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, man. Uh, so I, I went to the office at the theater company and I asked them, I said, Hey, Weston, if you let me out of my contract, I promise you, uh, you don't have to pay me anything else. I just want to opt it out of my contract and nothing else will happen from there. Um, and they all told me no. I was like, damn it. I understand. I'll just kind of just wait out. And then uh, Wednesday afternoon, two days later, prior to the Monday, I get this phone call. And they're like, hey, Carrie, you've been opted out of your contract. Mind you, this was on March, like, 1st, March 1st or 2nd. I was like, oh, wow. Like, this is awesome. And I already set up a show for AML Future Stars, which was uh, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And that was on a Friday on March 13th. And that's when I made my debut in professional wrestling on that 13th uh, on the AML show. And then right then I made like this huge burst in the wrestling scene. All these damn dirt sheet articles are coming out and all these people were like Rich Morton's son started wrestling and this is awesome. And then the pandemic hit and it shut 
everything down. I like I lost bookings all over the West Coast and just all over the place. But it was it was uh, something that needed to happen. I wasn't ready to go on the road at the time. Yeah. I needed to learn more and get ready. But uh, kind of a crazy experience how things just turn out to work out. It's just ending my contract, wrestling, and then you know if my contract weren't to end at that time, they could put like a no compete clause on my contract and waited out six or seven months and I would just be stuck within the company not be able to do anything just wait there and see if I ever get an opportunity doing something else well I guess one of the things that I want to ask and I don't want the son of a professional wrestler's answer I want the legitimate Carrie Morton answer um you know as a father now and watching my kids discover music and some of the music now is not something I would choose to listen to but I know when they were younger they really applauded what I might have been listening to. Were you, and don't give me the fucking stock answer, I want to know the truth. Were you, after the age of six, a professional wrestling fan? Or were you just kind of, I mean, did you like, you know, what your dad was doing? Did you know what your dad was doing? Did you like another company that maybe your dad didn't work for? Did you have the toys for that company? Like, what was that experience like as a child, you know, and I don't want, don't give me, give me the straight shoot on that one. No, that's cool. I know I, I've been real. I, I was always, always a professional wrestling fan ever since I grew up. Uh, I mean, mind you, I grew up in this business. Like that's, I'm not, that's not a joke or anything. Like I grew up in a stroller going to independent wrestling shows with my dad while he's making a living, busting his ass to put food and clothes on the table for us. So uh, I, I just traveled with them all these years. And then you know, as I grew up, I loved WWE. I watched the early WWE. I collected every single action figure that was out, you know, every weekend on a, a following Monday. Dad would take me to Walmart and we'd buy new action figures. And I would sit down on the floor while I watched Monday Night Raw on the TV. And he would sit in the recliner and I would play with my action figures. Like it's just always been a thing for me. I've always loved professional wrestling. But, you know, there, there was a time that I actually kind of despised wrestling, you know, especially when I got into my teens. Uh, and I was playing ball games and my dad couldn't make it because he had to go work. He had to go wrestle. Uh, and, you know, and I feel awful and I still do for my older brothers and sisters that that were born during his prime back in the 80s. You know, when he was a rock star on top of the world, just wrestling every weekend, selling out arenas and he was just never home. Uh, so, you know, I had the better end of that, but it, it was there was a time at, I fucking hated wrestling. I didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, and it was, it was about six or seven months. And then just out of the blue, I think I, I was pretty young at the time and I watched Ricochet on YouTube and uh, it just blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, this guy's doing this stuff. And I was going to gymnastics and I was going to a couple of cheerleading things, just kind of getting my, getting my toes in the water. And uh, I was like, damn, man, that's so cool. I could maybe one day do something like that. So I'd go down to his wrestling school and I would practice, but no, it's never never really changed. I've always, you know, for the most part, majority of my whole life, wrestling was always number one. That was the end goal. That's why I did theater is honestly just to get better at wrestling later, later down the road. You've had a front row ticket to the resurgence of your dad's career, and you are now part of his history, which is kind of weird. I, I don't know if you've even thought of it like that, but you're part of your dad's history now. If you've ever really sat down and thought of that, like your your dad, f for everything he's ever done, now this resurgence, you're right by his side. You've wrestled on some big shows with your dad. Do you do you understand the magnitude right now of of the, the moment he is in his career? Because he's doing something that's really unseen in the wrestling business for someone his age. You know, most of the guys his age. Uh, will show up to an indie show, stand in the middle of the ring, get a parade of people, take a picture for five dollars, maybe sit back in a merch table, sell some shirts. Your your dad's on NWA, you know. Your your dad's on AEW. You're right by his side on a lot of this stuff. Holy, do you, you understand that? Now, now that you put it like that, I mean, hell, that was just a kind of a kick in the face. I'm like, oh, shit. No, I, I do. I, I do kind of. And now it's it, it kind of weighs on me, too, of everything I do and my decisions of 
how I perform out there and how people look at me is there, you know, you're always going to be looked at as uh, that's Ricky Morton's son, you know, that that's Kerry Morton or that's Ricky Morton over there. And now he has a son that's wrestling too, which is really cool. And I'm thankful that my dad goes on his social media and he promotes me a lot and uh, make sure I stay busy, which is awesome. Uh, but no, it, it's, it's different. And especially, I think I was a little, I was still a little green when I was getting on these big shows and I was just nervous. I was excited to wrestle. This is everything I ever wanted to do. When I finally had the opportunity to do it, I was just kind of like buckled up. I never, I never faced nerves in my life before. You know, when I did theater and, you know, in front of thousands and thousands of people or I sang somewhere, like I didn't give a damn. But obviously now when you're in front of all this wrestling crowd and in front of everything you ever wanted, you know, you get nerves and they act up. So uh, it's cool. And I, you know, my dad kind of, it is kind of crazy when you think about it, 65 years of age, he's fucking doing everything. <laughs> he's so wild right now. Uh, I know just like just today, he's going out to Kansas City, I believe, and then like Arkansas. So he flew out today and he's just like, man, hey, I'm going to be gone till Sunday. So uh, just keep it locked in and I'll catch you. And then right when we get back, we have to go to another show somewhere on a Tuesday, like in Atlanta, Georgia. So it is kind of unprecedented that you just never know what the hell is going to happen next and uh he just he keeps up with this game he keeps up he loves this sport he he loves his business and i think that's something that you mentioned too is like aew and stuff like that you know my dad never had a position where he was a coach in professional wrestling and that's something i think he's really started to weigh on is he's always wanted to be like a coach at the end of his career of wrestling and step back behind the scenes work of the other talent work for the younger talent so I know that's something that's been on his mind recently. He's like, you know, when I finally do step down from wrestling, I, I'd like to be a coach somewhere. And, you know, he's put a lot of love and a lot of dedication in the NWA. So I hope uh, he stays there and I hope I do as well. But uh, I never, you never know where the road's going to turn. You know, I know he's got a few interesting emails, especially in the past two weeks from a, that big company in New York or something. But uh, I don't know what's going on. So Oh, oh, did you see what this son of a bitch just did? Yeah, I see. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, you know, we've talked about your dad, okay, and one of the things that I wanted to make sure of is to put you, because, I mean, we've had your dad on the show, we, lo yep. we love your dad, we've been fans since we were kids, blah, 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 but there is this jewel in the rough that is Kerry Morton that I wanted, why I really wanted on the show is because not only do I think you're uber talented, but I think you're the future of professional wrestling and for as young as you are and for the knowledge that you've you've acquired along the way i wanted that to shine so Thank one you. of the things i do want to talk about is like you know maneuvering in this business yes you have you know a lot of history to take from um do you feel like you're more equipped because of uh your motivation or your experience in just in your life experience um, or do you think it's, uh, because the wrestling business has changed so much and there's so many avenues and opportunities for younger guys to come in, do you feel like, uh, I mean, you just said something that was kind of interesting that you wanted to stay with the NWA, but I mean, are you having fun doing these indie shots? Do you feel like you're equipped for it now? Cause a lot of the time here, you've been talking about how green you are. Right. No, now I, I feel beyond levels of where it was. And I think first it started with confidence. You know, my whole life, I never was shy of confidence. I never, you know, I always walked into the room with my head held high. And, you know, especially when I went to auditions or anything else, uh, I wasn't afraid. I was, you know, my dad always says too, and I, I don't mean to talk about him, but I take this as one is never be afraid to be afraid. And it took me a while to understand that. And especially in the past, I would say probably six or seven months is when I really started to figure out myself figure out what I want out of this business. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I would love to make this my full-time job. You know, my motivations are high. They've always been high. I, I want to do this every single weekend as much as, as long as I can and perform and wrestle and just keep on growing as a performer, you know, reinventing myself. Once Kerry Morton kind of gets to a plateau, all right, let's change it up. Let's do something else. Uh, and that's something I, I consider every day, Lars, is like, man, what can I do that's different. What can I do that makes an audience member want to buy my t-shirt? What can I do that that guy that is, you know, that's 60 years old that's scrolling through Facebook is going to stop and watch my promo? What can I do differently? Uh, and that's something, oh, 
lights oh, yeah. would be the start. Oh. Give me uh, one second. Give me one second. Are oh, we clapping? Shit. Is this a clap on? <laughs> oh, shit. I don't what know what just happened. happened Are you guys there? Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, Casper. I can't believe it. Damn, Casper. I'm the only one in my house. Mind you, I promise. Damn, Casper. <laughs> so, uh, there's an inside joke, too, because, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys, I'm getting off topic a little, and I'll go back to what you just said, Lars, but uh, there's a there's a thing in our house, and I, I've been seeing, and I know I'm not seeing shit, or I'm not, like, paranoid or anything like that, but I'm seeing this, like, shadow in our hallway, and I've seen it, like, three times in the past couple months, and I, I've noticed it. And I don't know if it's our like our clothes hanger in the hallway or, but it scares the living shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I see it and I'm like, oh, it's just a shadow casting off the window. But uh, so we just named him Casper. And Casper lives somewhere in the hallway. Are you? The, well, that, that, hold on. Is are you the only one that's seen it? I no. So I'm the only one that's seen it. Yeah. No, I, I asked my dad and he's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I haven't heard a noise here. But, and the bottom of our steps, so when you go in our house, you know, there's a stairway going up and down. And at the bottom of our steps, I, I heard the other night, like, a step going up the steps. And, like, it was, like, it was so weird. I knew it was creaking the steps. Nothing. Nothing at all. And wow. I, like, my dad was sleeping in the other room. So, I don't know. I don't believe – I'm not trying to believe it. I'm trying, trying to get down paranormal no, activities. No, I'm, I'm – dude, I, my house has – some stuff going on too so it's all good that's why i'm asking crazy shit so i it might be totally picture. blanchard <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that out there guys <laughs> there's also this is a crazy scenario i know this is this Holy is Anderson. crazy real quick, lady, but I, I gotta get on another story i gotta tell you about this story in our house that was wild uh the day bobby and uh passed away you know immediately i wanted to help Bobby's family i set up a gofundme uh, and I left the house. I was gone all day. I went to another friend's house. And we, we set up everything. Um, my dad was out of town. I, I was the only one home. My mom works out of town as well. So I was the only one home. And when I got home, I walked into my bedroom. And there was a picture of It's a WCW photo. It's original paper. It was signed to Kerry James. I love you. My name. Uh, Bobby Eaton. And I walked in my bedroom. And the photo is in the floor. Wow. It's in the floor, and I'm like, "Wow, man, Whoa. this is." Bobby said, "So I don't know, you know, it was Bob just something." It straight up, straight. Never, up. I, I, you know, Bobby said thank you, and I was like, "Yeah, man," and it was wild as hell. So, it's just a story I had to explain real quick. It's up in the ball, no, no. above the wall, in front of the camera, but it's right there, center of the wall. It's Bobby and my one of my role models, and uh, it was laying in the floor. I had to go buy a new picture frame and everything, but he just said. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So wow. uh, I, I do want to get back to your question, which okay. is awesome, by the way. But uh, I kind of got lost. The lights went out. I talked about a ghost. Can you give me a little hint of what you just said? I kind of got lost again. I went on a rampage. What I was asking is just like, how do you maneuver in this as your as yourself? Because, you know, a lot of like, I guess the, the, the essence of my question is, is you see like a guy like gold dust. He sort of outshined that Dusty Rhodes son thing. Uh, Cody's doing it now to a certain degree. He's still, you know, maybe they're playing with the angle with that, but about the dad and the whole thing. And they're bringing that to try to give him some, you know, credibility with the WWE fan, whatever. My point is, is how do you shine? How do you make your mark? So like I said I, about being different, it's what I think about every day is, is being different. So, you know, right now I have, I have a good platform in my career. I, I'm with the National Wrestling Alliance. I like it there. Uh, I'm thankful that I'm getting good, a good push there. I, I'm working my ass off and they're seeing that. They're seeing results. They're seeing every time I show up, I'm getting better. Uh, I'm not afraid to step in front of the camera. I'm not afraid to go to the social media team and say, hey, guys, like, whatever you need me to do, I'm doing. I'm not afraid to set up the ring, put up the chairs, take it all down like – that's just who I am. That's how I was growing up in this business. Now that I'm kind of making an edge for myself, uh, it's what's next. What do I want to do next? And, you know, and I think that's just eventually somewhere down here soon is when I do graduate from college is going on to another platform as much as I would love to be at the NWA and much as I'm going to stay and, you know, stay there as long as I can. And as long as everything is going great and uh, fine and dandy, I'm going to stay there. But Eventually, I have to grow as a human being. I have to grow as a performer, leave my comfort zone more, and go out in the world. You know, I just made a, 
a recent post today is I want to go travel more. Uh, I'm in the summer right now from school and sports. I want to travel out West Coast and wrestle some more. I've been there once before, and I, I'm just trying to grow as a performer, wrestle different styles of wrestling, see what uh, clicks and what doesn't, you know? You know. I'm not afraid to take a chance and get laughed at or take a chance and then make a huge pop and make a name for myself or getting over. It's just now trying to figure out – uh, and just what, what can I do that can simply be different? I'm repeating myself a time, but I just, that's every day. I have a little journal I'll write down, uh, kind of weird, you know, cliche, whatever, but I write down every day, the word different. And I, I just put a period on it and I, I just, I kind of question around it all the time. Well, you answered my question of my next one. So I guess I'll skip ahead and ask, what have you taught your dad? We, oh, we man. you know, you're you're a different generation of wrestler. There has to be times he leans on you now, even as green as you are for maybe advice on maybe what today's fan wants. What uh, have you taught your dad anything? Yeah. So uh, that's something too, is, you know, I, I used to think of myself as a real green boy in the business, you know, just learning, starting out. But now I feel like I've, I've made tremendous leaps towards advancements. And, and now I'm calling matches especially when we work together, like I'm the one that's putting shit. Hey dad, you do this here. And he's like, okay, cool. And then like, I'm the one. And you know, today's generation is so much different from back then. Cause back then they didn't talk about shit. They didn't talk about some finishes or high spots or they dressed in separate locker rooms for God's sakes. You know, they didn't know one another. So today's time you, we talk about spots. We talk about, Hey man, this is going to work out. What's your timing going to be when you jump here or vice versa. So that's something I really dig into my dad. And I remember, this is kind of crazy too, is I am awful at social media. This is kind of funny. This is the other term, but my dad loves it. He eats it up. I mean, he absolutely <laughs> loves Twitter. He loves his Instagram. He loves his Facebook. And uh, when, you know, when I was younger, I, I got it started for him. I, I made him a little page. And at first he didn't know what the hell he was doing, but now he <laughs> absolutely adores it. So I think that's something I'll take a little credit for is uh, – helping him get his presence out there. It's like, dad, when I was younger, I was like, dad, you're, you're a WWE hall of famer and you don't even have anything to like you have an Instagram to show for it. You don't have a, a Twitter account to show for it or anything. And he's like, you're, you're right. So, but now he loves it. You all speaking his opinion. He just don't give a shit. Uh, and that's something I need to learn myself is what I'm taking from him is I need to get better at social media. Obviously I'm not that good at it. I don't really, uh, I, I, for the longest time, I never cared to be good at it, but now I'm like, okay, this is my job. Like, I got to promote myself. And that's kind of weird. I want to promote other people and I want to help other people grow. But at the same time, like, damn, I gotta, I gotta put myself a little first sometimes and be selfish and put myself, uh, you know, in, in the spotlight here and there. So that's something that's, that's, uh, I, I learn every day as well. And I'm picking up from him. And I think he's learning from me is we're just, you know, we're clicking along in this road of life. You know, so let me just get this straight. And I, this is one of the, one of the clarifications I wanted. Did you sign a contract with the NWA or are you still uh, basically like a freelancer? So at the moment, I am a freelance independent professional wrestler. I didn't okay. sign any people. And also, you know, when the opportunity came to, and this was something uh, Billy talked to my, discussed with my pops and I was in the ring and I just heard the story, but, uh, but I'm an NCAA athlete and I just, I wasn't comfortable signing anything at the time. Now, if the opportunity came about, I, I would probably sign something for a few, but uh, no, I, I'm not under contract. I just work for major league wrestling. I'm going back to GCW here soon. Uh, you know, I have a couple of deals with a TV show coming up with a really, really special documentary series with a big net. Oh, I can't say something. With a big subscription service that starts with an N, maybe you guys can get a little toast of that. But, uh, I, you know, I'm just trying everything. I haven't signed anything. I don't want to. I asked them, hey, my loyalty is here. If you can take my word of mouth, um, I, I'll stay here for as long as everything is going planned and going well. And then, you yeah, know, and that's how, how things have been going so far. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's, I'm sorry, I, you blow me away right now because Lars, I, we've had Hall of Famers. We had guys that are main eventing some of the biggest shows on. You are very well spoken. You, you are almost smoother than maybe 90% of the guests we've had on. I, I, mean, I feel like I sound boring as hell. I, I'm talking to one of my favorite 
rock stars. Like, man, it's, listen, and this, I'm not trying to mark out moment or anything, but I feel a little boring. I love talking with wrestling. I'm like, am I being a good, like, guest on your guys' no, shows? You no, I you, uh, you listen to this. I, mean, I, I feel like I'm talking to someone that has 20 years in the industry and I kind of get lost in your question. So when, when you're done talking, I'm sitting there just listening. I, I go from host to fanboy because I'm really soaking up what you're saying. So I, I, I got a little ADHD. I just recently figured out too. So I'm just all over the damn place. You know, I'm 21 years of age and I just recently found out that, hey, I might be ADHD. So let's figure that out. <laughs> so um, I feel like I'm jumping like a squirrel just limb to limb. We're getting close to the end. We've got a couple more questions left for, for you, and then we're going to play. We're bringing back the game that all of them oh, are. Loves. Yes, we are. And okay. we can't do it with tag teams. It's just way no, too yeah, hard yeah, to right. do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we're going to bring back uh, what Carrie, what is Carrie watching? So you know, here in a few minutes, we're going to guess what you're currently watching, not what you watched a month ago or what you've seen, what you're currently binging. What you as in like a, a like a TV television. show, like a, television, television show, right? not AEW. Yeah. We're not, you know, that doesn't count. Although I should guess that one day. Uh, okay. But anyways, <laughs> I guess to wrap up my questioning is goals. Uh, I know ultimately everybody wants to hold the championship belt and the greatest company around. What are your short term goals? What where do you see yourself in six months? Truthfully, being a broke college student, I would love to make some good money in professional wrestling. That's uh, that's the first, you know, I think, and as odd as it sounds, it's like, oh man, all he cares about money. Like, no, truly, I, I don't care about money. You know, it's great, but also you're, you're a young, ambitious young man that's traveling the country and you're making pennies on the dollar technically from these wrestling promoters that are kind of, you know, and I know are kind of taking advantage of you and and using you for the little, you know, the cloud that you have and the little fame that you have. But, uh, you know, I'd love to make some money in professional wrestling one time, you know, you make a little provide, maybe get a new car of some sort, get a new, you know, buy, put a new truck, put some money down in the house in the long goal. But uh, at the end of the day, money isn't everything. You know, what you said is kind of true. I, I want, I want a championship belt. I want my name edged up on the history stone. Like, damn, that kid was fought for that championship and won that championship um you know i think that a major thing a first big goal in my my career is i've won a few championships at independent promotions and tag team gold but uh you know when you think about the historic wrestling legacy i think about the nwa world heavyweight championship i don't know i mean i don't know about you guys and uh i i just i sit in the locker room one day and it's a funny story and nick aldis is across from me and uh, he's getting ready for his match. And it's, you know, it's early in the day for the TV tapings and we're talking. I said, hey, Nick. And I got his attention because he was on his computer typing up. He's working on his business. I said, hey, will you look at me for a second? And he said, yeah. and he said you're going to win that gold back. And I know that you're soon, hopefully. I, I think I believe in you and I think you're going to get that gold back. And he said, your first contender, I'm going to try to make it everything I got to be me. And I'm going to give you a hell of a fight. And I promise you that on everything that I have, I'm going to give you a fight. And I want something out of this. I want people to watch this wrestling and say, damn, that's what I used to see back in the day. And that was everything. So uh, that's a few goals I have right now is just kind of, you know, the cliche. I want to make some good money for myself eventually one day. And uh, I want to make it my full-time job at the moment. That's just what I do. And, and of course, I attend uh, college, university, but uh, that's something I really want to do. And also kind of, I know this is crazy too, and this is a whole other turn of professional wrestling, but I do miss theater. Uh, I miss performing. And I've been working on a few little like country songs, as crazy as that sounds. And I, <laughs> I'm trying to learn the guitar. That's something that I'm struggling with the most, Lars. I, I've watched you plenty of times to... Try to figure out the Don't pattern. watch me if you want to learn anything, bro. <laughs> Man, I, I've been watching the, some, I found some acoustic sets on YouTube. I was like, oh, shit, this is awesome. But I'm trying. Uh, that's a goal for me in life, honestly, other outside of wrestling. I'm speaking it into existence. Is I want to learn to play the guitar and nail it. So uh, that's a challenge for myself. I set that at 2022, and I, I'm getting a decent at it, but it still just comes with experience and time. I, you know, I, obviously, it's not an overnight gig, and for me, it's, I think, four times as hard. I, I don't know. I cannot understand the rhythm to save my life, but 
One day. One day, damn it. <laughs> well, I guess if I had a final question here, uh, you know, I would. I first of all, I hope I hope I get to see you out in California sometime soon. Is there is there a place on the indie circuit where you've felt like you've learned the most, and maybe just on your own? And if there was somebody that you got in the ring with where you really learned something, because you know, obviously, you've had the training of all trainers. I mean, you've had some of the best, right? But is there one guy that you've stepped foot in the ring with and really learned something besides the aforementioned? Yeah, uh, that's damn. What a cool question. I was thinking of this recently too. Is there's a few guys in the independent circuit that deserve credit, and you know, which I hate to say, and I will do my best to always try to put these guys over that that never get the credit that they rightfully deserve. Um, one guy that really comes to mind is George South. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're familiar, with, he was oh, an yeah. NWA, uh, NWA, you know, WCW enhancement talent. Uh, trained a lot of the boys, but I worked with him. And George South is very old school. He calls everything in the ring. You're all ears. You listen to it. Uh, and that's how it always goes, no matter who. He, and he's wrestled some of the biggest names in professional wrestling, the Hardys, you know, at these huge shows such as Russell Cade. But when I stepped in the ring of George South, he trusted me enough that we went 35 minutes in a sold out building in Sevierville, Tennessee, and he allowed me to call the match. And, he, and that's a first for anybody as he allowed me to call the match and I learned and I learned how to call this match. And now, uh, and he, you know, he showed me to put things in during it. How he's all ears and how to listen to the crowd and what the crowd likes. Uh, so George South has been tremendous. Uh, Chase Owens is another guy that, you know, I, I'll say it again. He deserves a lot of credit. Also, there's another guy named Rob Killjoy. Um, mm. And I can talk about other guys. His name is Rob Killjoy. He's a part of the Ugly Ducklings. Uh, if you always see him on my independent show, you know you're going to get your money's worth because he's crazy as hell. He does all kinds of crazy high spots, but he's also just a fun wrestler that helps you memorize spots, helps you memorize wrestling. Because when you get to leagues such as AEW and, uh, and especially NWA and, you know, Ring of Honor, or, uh, WWE, that you have agents for your matches. And during your matches, you have to memorize everything to everything within maybe 30 minute span and then go perform it on national television. So that's something that's really helped me is memorizing, uh, memorizing what, how to do this, where to take my time, where to sell here more, uh, you know, where to get some crowd uh, participation at. So uh, there's, you know, the Heat Sinkers is another tag team that's helped me. There's been a ton that's really, really stepped out and, uh, you know, stepped their foot out and say, hey, man, I'm willing to help you if you're willing to work. I was like, yeah, you're damn right. So. I I want to go back to the George South thing because yeah. Lars and I were just talking about George South, your dad, and you. Uh, something that uh, came over both of our social medias and a great pair of boots. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wait, 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 right here. Wait, right here. Are you talking about these bad boys right here? Can you I see am. This? Yes. yes. Oh, man. So right there, I, I, and I'm glad you brought it up because I did want to touch on the story before we end this podcast because that was one of those stories where Lars and I we picked up the phone and we're like, dude, that's a heartwarming story. Where uh, I guess the Cliff Notes version is, uh, for whatever reason, your dad gave those boots to George South 20, 30 years ago, something like that, 40, maybe 40, 40 years ago, years ago. 42 yes. years ago. And then just recently, George had the boots. I think we everybody forgot about them. And he gifted those same boots to you, what, a weekend ago with that? Yeah, it was, uh, it was last Saturday, too, and caught me off guard. You know, when we got to the hotel, uh, George was sitting in the lobby, and he had this box in my hand. And my dad, being as ADHD as he is, ran over to George South and asked him, what's in the box? What's in the box? Let me see the box. And George is like, no, 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 no. It's, it's a gift for Chad Adams, which is another sponsor that brought us in, the promoter for the show. We all believed it, and then we just waited out. So when we went to dinner that night, uh, you know, George got everyone's attention, and he, and he gave this wonderful speech about, you know, at the time that he had many children, and he couldn't afford anything such as this, and, you know, rock and roll had it all. And my dad, you know, George went to my dad at the time, and I think this is 1982, if I'm not mistaken, or something, or and he asked them, uh, hey, rock and roll, I love your boots. And my dad just said, hey, man, take them off my feet. You know, come meet me at my house in Monroe, North Carolina at the time and come get them. And uh, it's kind of crazy to think my dad did this all the time because, you know, he was he was fortunate enough that he was given so many 
great things and he wanted to share it with all the boys and especially you know the enhancement talent that didn't that did their part but never caught a break in this business mm. uh, so that was it was and i've known george my whole life especially growing up in the carolina independent wrestling scene the tennessee wrestling scene virginia all the surrounding states seeing george at all these shows um so when that, when he brought the conversation up about the boots and he pulled me up from the table and he said, you come here. And he said, you know, this is, uh, your dad gave me these and now I'm giving them to you. And uh, man, I, I was, it's a hard moment to replay because I was just in tears. I was, man, I just couldn't believe it. Because, uh, you know, you hear these stories, but when you, when you see it and all the crowds, everyone's around you and all the boys are around you, uh, heartwarming it was a very heartfelt moment that hell I, I was teared up and made me teary eyed made my dad tear up it was a truly uh an experience i hope i never forget wow all right i i did i because once again when lars was like hey do we want carry i'm like yes and then i think that story came out within an hour of of us booking you on the pod i'm like holy cow and lars is like we got to bring this up so I, I did want to touch on that and it probably deserves way more time than we're actually given it because that's, that's just a story, like you said, of, of your dad. And that's part of your dad's personality that no one ever really talks about. So uh, amazing. That, you know, do the, do they that's fit? How I was raised too. And I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's kind of how I was raised is, you know, I might not have the most, but what I do have, I, I, I want to share, you know, I want people to experience what I experienced. I want, uh, I want my other friends to be like, man, like I recently pit vipers hit me up with a crazy deal and they sent me like a ton of awesome sunglasses. And I just, all my friends that we always talked about when we were kids about when pit vipers were first coming out, like we always wanted a pair, but they were so expensive at the time. They're like 200, $300. And just the fact that, that, you know, they hit me up and they sent me a few pairs. And then I, I message all my friends I haven't talked to in for years. And I was like, guys, do you remember like this? And I was like, if you guys can like just show up, I, I got a gift for you guys. And like, it was just, it's one of those moments, you know, you can never, you can never just, you can get back, you, you know, you relive this memory and it's like, wow, like I got to do something that, you know, I always dreamed of doing if giving it back. So that was, that was an awesome experience. I didn't mean to interrupt you, kind of just side noted, but I just wanted to say it. It was sweet. Do the boots fit. No, unfortunately, I, you know what? I honestly haven't even tried them on, if I'm being truthful. When you smell them, they just smell like they're 40 years old. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. They smell like they're 40 years old. It's the same thing Lars like, said to me. <laughs> I found recently, too, uh, you know, we're cleaning out our house. I'm trying to condense stuff. I have too much shit. I, I always checked out your Lars' uh, closet area you have on your Instagram page. Wise. I see all your stuff, too. And I'm like, man, we should consider that because I found a box of all my dad's like 80s rock and roll shirts that he just put up. Bro, bro, bro. You, first of all, <laughs> one of them has to come to me. Okay. Yeah, just, I, let's I, just, I, just something because, you know, come on. I will most definitely send you. My, my, also, one of my friends owns a vintage t shirt business. And uh, I, I happened, I threw a, two, a, a few to the side that were like smalls or extra smalls at the time. And, I yeah. said, hey, man, go make you some extra cash on some of these. But I found a little shop of horror shirt from the original Broadway show that my dad had in there. And I was Whoa. just like, you got to be kidding me, man. Like, this is like, you're sitting pictures. on a gem right here, you know. Even and if I, you don't sell them, post the pictures. People want to yeah. see stuff. Well, yeah. well, and me, like, I'm a collector of Jim Crockett, you know, NWA, Jim Crockett memorabilia. So I have, like. All that's almost a huge stack of t-shirts that you find from like all the Crockett era, like Magnum TA, I love Magnum TA. Uh, you know, I have a few, I have like the, the Starcade shirts. I have almost all the rock and roll shirts, um, the bandanas, the merchandise, the foam fingers. I have it and I love it. And I, that's something I'm like, that's hard to give up, especially as you get older and you yeah. start moving. And I'm like, I can't get rid of this shit, but I yeah. keep on collecting it. I keep on finding myself searching for things that I can't well, find. Well, one of the best things uh, that happened for on my, on my 50th birthday, Rancid's management uh, did some of those, what are they, those cameos? Yes. So I got one from, from Tito Santana, Nikita Koloff, and my favorite, Magnum TA. And I got them stored on my phone. I'm, they, I watch them all the time, but like, Magnum TA, you know, I mean, shame what happened, but 
uh, you know, he was the guy. But you know what? Let's do this. Let's get into the show, Dennis, because I actually have um, all right. I have a good idea what this kid's watching. Oh, here oh, we go. Okay. It's oh, shit. All right. the fastest rising game in all of podcast history. It's what is Kerry Morton watching? Kerry, basically, here it is. We have three rounds. Lars and I have to guess what you are currently watching today. Not a month ago. You can still be binging. You can have watched a few episodes right now, but you have to be currently in it. Are you ready to play? And you hand out points. Like, if we're close, like... You know, we guess a show, and maybe you just ended it like a week ago. You can give us a half a point. Or now, let me get a little bit of clarity too. Is this like on cable television, or any, is this like a any television? Any television? Right. Right. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. I, I am ready for your guesses. Lars, you booked the show. You go first. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Fuck you. Well, you know, I'm assuming I'm assuming that he's, you know, Netflix is something that's on his radar. So. I'm definitely going to give it uh he's probably watching or just finished Ozark. <laughs> Damn, that's a, that's a point. I mean, is that a is that a thing, right? That's, that's, a, point. that's right in the money. That's a point. I just yeah. finished it. I just but, but there's a few others that I'm still adventuring in. So the yeah. game continues, but <sighs> you hit it right on the dot. Uh you you also remind me maybe of a guy that's a bit of a throwback, so I'm going to say Sopranos. Ooh, unfortunately, I, I, I'm not in Sopranos right now. No, no, no. <laughs> I, that's a good guess, though. I've been trying to. I just, you know, I can't get I can't get through it enough. But that's a hell of a guess. All right. I'm also going to stay with the Netflix, and I'm going to say Cowboy Bebop. No, no, no. What is Cowboy uh, Bebop? All right. What is never that? mind. That, that's, what is that? That's a big goose egg for me. Hold up. Hold up. Are you going to note this down real quick? Cowboy okay. Bebop. Bebop. All right. All right. I got it. I'm getting down already. Okay. Got you. All right. One, Game one, nothing. Uh, Mickey Mouse Funhouse. No, that's a young kid <laughs> joke. No. Um, Damn it, you got me. Uh, <laughs> Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Okay. Point. Yeah. I just. All right. Gonna, just, one to one. Yeah. One to one. One, 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 one. All right. Then I'm gonna say. Do you have? Okay. Just a quick question. Do you have HBO yep. or HBO Max? I do. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to go with the John Cena. Uh, uh, what, what, what's Peacemaker. The Peacemaker. Okay, yeah. So I, I watched it like two. I mean, I might be a little out of the range, but I would still give you a point because I watched it like within a week span. Okay. All right. That, so that's, that's still, that has to be a point. Okay. I did watch that one too. All right. For the tie or the loss, Dennis? Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Don't d- d- just the way you said it. I mean, <laughs> thank you everybody for no. Like I don't know. I was hoping you were gonna say the Disney good Plus. place uh-huh. on Netflix. It's, it's called the, the Good, good place. place on Netflix. I was hoping I love you were that show, say, yeah, dude. Show. I I got into it. Uh, I'd say maybe three weeks ago, and I like every time I try to. I, I have to sleep with the lights off, but every time I watch go to bed, I try to watch at least an episode. It's so great. I'm loving the show. The Marvel show on Disney Plus. No, I, I don't watch a lot of Disney Plus anymore. It's crazy. I, I don't even watch it. Like, I watched The Mandalorian, which was great. Um, but I, I don't really follow a lot of Disney Plus. And I, I pay for the subscription and everything. But it's just something I'm like, I do get on there. The only time I will get on there is I'm a Simpsons fanatic. I love oh. the Simpsons. I love it. I will, so I, I will get on there and I will continue to watch Simpsons. And if any of the listeners on there happen to find the Nike SB Simpsons that were recently released, size 11 you let Kerry morton know in my inbox because uh he's willing to pay some good money for some sense of nike sb dunk low so you find me for the simpson version i'm wanting to have okay. a pair i think i might have a line actually Kerry. but it might yeah. cost you a vintage uh shirt well you never know we can we can make a deal we can make a deal but i win so thank you Kerry. Thank it's you been, for coming on been... the podcast, Carrie. <laughs> this has been amazing. I really Damn. appreciate everything you've done for me. Damn, I Nothing. gotta give the win the wise. I gotta give the win the wise today, Dennis. But listen, never say never. We'll continue this conversation a little ways down the road. I'm not yeah, sure we will. will. Not after <laughs> this game. I want my attempt. I want to be involved in the game too. Although I'm the guest, I want my attempt to be like, you know what? I'm going to try to guess what these guys are watching. You know what we're going to do, Carrie? This is what we're going to do. We're going to get 
your dad and Robert, and the three of us are going to interview them. Oh, oh man. That'd because be nice. I think that's pushing. That's see, that's awesome. the thing. And plus, you have an inside into there that would like be, I think, would make because we would come more from, I mean, you know, I, I know your dad, obviously, but my point is, is that we, I think we could have a really good, we could get, we could get something out of that that would be some of the stories, unique. though. We might get canceled, so we gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> fair. That's I'm fair. like, hey, rock and roll. It's not 18, it's 1980 anymore. We can't talk about that shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, they're no. really funny care. Their stories are so funny. Uh, there's a, if you get a chance to, I know I'm, I'm rambling on this podcast a little bit more, but there's a goat. It's about the goat and the pole. Uh, you got to do, if you ever just see them, you got to ask the goat in the pole story. I might've heard the story at least 30 times. And I, every time it gets me, it's the funniest story. All right. Ever. All right. Uh, my dad's, he's a, he's a riddler. He loves taking out some jokes too. So and well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit him up and ask him about the goat, goat in the pole tonight. See what happens. <laughs> Will you text me the answer? You got it. <laughs> yes, we'll share it with you. That's for sure. Guys, yeah. once again, I, I'm so grateful to be on this hey, podcast. Well, you don't end the show. I end the show. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> That's my job. I, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to explain myself of how grateful I am to be on this platform with you guys. Thanks for giving me an opportunity. Dennis, Lars, this is your show. I just wanted to give my little intake once more. Uh, take everything you guys for me. From my He's Appreciate taking everything it. from me, Lars. I'm yeah, sorry, so Dennis. Good. I took the spotlight, damn it. I can't wait in two weeks when it's a wrestling perspective with Kerry Morton and Lars Fredrickson. That would and, that actually probably do better than what we got right now. <laughs> you know what? It's against me. I agree, though. <laughs> uh, Kerry, where can people find you? Find them on Instagram at Real K Morton, Twitter at Instagram, uh, Twitter at Real K Morton, excuse me, uh, Facebook at just Kerry Morton, that's spelled K E R R Y M O R T O N. Uh, if you would like to support a professional independent wrestler, I have a Pro Wrestling Tees store. Uh, I think it's ProWrestlingTees.com slash Kerry Morton. And for all those listeners that are huge sneakerheads, uh, find me some Nike SBs and we'll talk. We'll talk major. I'll talk your head off all day. Anyways, I can talk shoes. That's a whole other episode. But <laughs> that's where to find me on some social media platforms. And then just check your dates, check your local independent shows because you might find me there as well. Wow, that's smooth. That guy is Lars Fredrickson, the living legend. Screw you, Larry Zabesco. He just took it. <laughs> I'm Dennis Farrell. You can find the Wrestling Perspective anywhere you get your podcasts, Fight TV, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, places that aren't even around yet. We'll be there eventually. So uh, make sure you subscribe, download, comment, do that stuff. Tell us hi. We appreciate it. Uh, for everybody, the show's over. We'll say our goodbyes off the air. Thank you, Carrie Morton. Thanks, guys.